Upgrading to a specific aero frame or carbon wheels with a deep rim can be very, very costly. Thankfully, there are some bits of kit that don't cost the earth and can dramatically improve your aerodynamic drag. To get a definitive ranking of the best bang for your buck products, we have come to this, the Silverstone Sports Engineering Hub. They've got a wind tunnel. Should we go and take a look? things. So the skin suit's done now. Four watts saved. Uh, on to helmets now. Now we're moving on to wheels. Well, we are back in the studio and I have to say a big thank you for standing in for me, Liam. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, while it would have been slightly funny, uh, the bug that you had wouldn't have made for a very nice video. Shall we slide into your CDA figures, oh, whittle yes. down the watts and tell our lovely viewers which aero upgrades represent the best value? Absolutely. We'll start with the worst value upgrades and finish with the best. First though, can you give us some info on how we tested. So in the wind tunnel, you sit on your bike on basically a set of scales, a big fan pulls the air over you and basically the scales measure the kind of drag force that's applied to you. So as you kind of make changes, make yourself more aerodynamic, you get less drag force applied to you. It gives you the numbers, we spit those out, we get a boffin to calculate them for us because we don't know what they mean. And then they tell us, how fast you are essentially at a kind of range of wind angles. That gets averaged down and we tell you the numbers. So we tested at 35 kilometers per hour, which we thought was speedy, but still an attainable kind of figure for, for a decent road cyclist on a flat road. Yeah. Um, if I can do it, you probably can <laughs> too. Um, we tested at zero, five and 10 degrees of yaw which I still don't know what your means, but uh, the, the wind was either hitting me straight on, hitting me slightly in the face, or hitting my ears. So our baseline run used a relaxed riding position, standard jerseys, short, cotton socks, and a vented helmet. For purists out there, this is the correct setup. This is what we want. And to ride at 35 kilometers per hour in that setup, Liam was having to put out around 216 watts with a CDA just a shade over 0.4. Uh, what does that actually mean though? <laughs> so your CDA is essentially your coefficient of aerodynamic drag, and in layman's terms, you were as aero as a brick. Oh, no. <laughs> And for reference, the best pro time trialists will have a CDA lower than 0.2, so around half that of yours. So you can see the kind of difference it makes. Okay, Simon, let's crack into the aero upgrades and the value packages. Let's start with the worst. I swapped the lovely bike radar jersey and shorts for a LeCol by McLaren Project Aero speed suit. It cost a whopping £350, so really a significant investment there. Yep, and as a result, you would hope for a big saving, but you save just 3.6 watts, which equates to just over £97 per watt. So not fantastic value in that sense. No, it, we should point out that that skin suit is one that I just had. It was from testing years back. Um, I never paid for it. I don't really use it either because it's difficult to get on. Um, it's not the comfiest design. There are plenty of skin suits out there on the market that are much cheaper and might actually work better for my body shape. Yeah, and of, of course we should also put it in context that while we're saying this is kind of like you know, the worst value upgrade that we tested, it's only the worst value of the things that we tested. And you know, compared to 
say purchasing a new bike for example which could cost upwards of you know five or six thousand pounds or dollars then actually this is still going to represent pretty good value. Absolutely. Um, I would also say that this isn't maybe going to be suitable for the club run. So this might be well, a race only. Sport. Depends how serious I your club run is. I have, seen, <laughs> I have seen some skin suits on the club run. I might have been guilty of that in the past. Um, but it's also worth pointing out that maybe you can get similar gains from a kind of aero optimized jersey and shorts setup. Yeah, that's right. Of course, you know, being sewn together does reduce kind of creasing and things like that. And I believe the, the skin suit that you had was also very tightly fitted at the front, which made it difficult very to stand low up. Crop. It was a very low crop, <laughs> I'll tell you. So that. yeah, maybe you don't want to go to the cafe in that, but it is designed for racing, isn't it? And you know, it's probably fair to point out as well that our kind of bike radar sportful kit isn't the worst kind of jersey and bibs you could have either. So if you're moving from something that is, you know, very kind of baggy and poorly fitted to a kind of skin suit, whether it's a Lacole skin suit or even you know, one from No Pins or Sportful or Castelli, you know, you're probably going to see even bigger gains as well. Absolutely. Right, moving on, what's next? So the next most expensive upgrade you use was the Hunt wheel set. Now this specific wheel set cost £950, but they saved a pretty significant 10.2 watts versus the humble Mavic Askin wheel set. So that is 93 pounds per watt saved. They do look really cool though. And they saved about a kilo on the overall bike rate. I guess it was about 400 grams. So just like with the skin suits, you know, you can of course get more expensive wheel sets that promise to be even more aerodynamic. You could also get slightly cheaper ones that, you know, are cheaper. So there is a kind of element of uh, what you get here. And it's probably also fair to say that the Mavic Askians were a pretty un-aero wheel set choice. So maybe you have a standard wheel set on your bike, which isn't quite as brick-like <laughs> as the Mavic Askians. I have to say though as well, a carbon wheel set aren't just for speed increases. We've mentioned the looks, but also they can improve the handling of a bike, um, the added stiffness as well. So there are a few more benefits than just going fast. Right, moving on. Now, this next one is big for our Liam. Would you like to tell them why? I don't really like aero socks. It's my first time wearing them. I've managed to avoid them till now, but I surrendered my good sense for science. Why do you hate them so much? I, d I don't really hate them, but I have seen a lot of them falling down. That is very amusing, actually. <laughs> um, and actually, the socks that you gave me on the day we're starting to slip at the end of each run. Yeah, that is true. But what if I told you that they saved a whopping 0.33 watts for the relatively good price of 28 pounds, which is actually around 84 pounds per watt, which of course doesn't really work because you didn't even save one watt. But let me explain why they might still be a good idea for certain riders. Now the thing is, of course, aerodynamic drag goes up at the kind of cube of speed and we tested as a, at a slower speed, as you said. So if you are a faster rider or you're racing time trials or you know, you're winning bike races through sprints, then you know, at faster speeds, you are gonna save a little bit more. Of course, the gains are never gonna be massive because you're only changing such a small, you know, such a small thing. But I think for 28 pounds, it's that kind of thing where it's a might, you know, you might as well have it. It is an exceptionally marginal gain, and yeah, you won't catch me wearing them for anything but a race because, yeah, they do fall down. As they get old, their kind of silicon gripper, grippy stuff loses its stickiness, yeah. and then, yeah, you look like a right plonker. So, if you're not racing time trials or you're a kind of not a fast racer, I probably wouldn't rush out to buy these, but, you know, otherwise, why not? Fair enough. Um, what is up next? Well, up next we have an aero helmet. Now, we commonly see these on a wide range of riders, and this one is the Laser Vento. It costs £250 or $300, and it saved you 7.6 watts. So that's £34 per watt saved. Well, we're getting quite good now. The one thing that I want to mention about this was that being in a wind tunnel allows you some of the most smooth air you've ever felt. So <laughs> while you're sitting there waiting for the timer to tick down, you can really feel the way that the air is being pulled over your head. And an aero helmet like this one, it really channeled the air very, very well. So the cooling effect at zero degree yaw and five degrees was really, really good. Get it to 10 degrees and you really start to lose that. And 
I'm not sure what 10 degrees of yaw equates to in terms of a crosswind. I'd imagine it's a relatively significant crosswind. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So once you get to that, you can really feel the helmet kind of blocking the air from entering your head. And, and you do lose the cooling benefit, which is very interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, I've kind of ridden in that helmet for a little bit and I think it is quite, it's one of the better kind of better vented aero road helmets that I've tested and it is fair to say that some aero road helmets, particularly older ones, didn't vent so well and would be pretty hot and so whilst like this is a good saving and it is particularly a quite a good value saving, you know, if you live somewhere hot or you do a lot of slow speed climbing then, you know, maybe an aero road helmet isn't for you and we could also say that this is also quite an expensive aero road helmet and that there are probably cheaper aero road helmets available. So if you were looking for an even better value aero saving, this could be a good one to look at. Okay, so the final components that we changed were all about adjusting Liam's position on the bike. Installing a set of 80 pound clip-on aero bars saved 6.8 watts in a flat position, even compared to the already very fast aero hoods position that we'll tell you about in a minute. That's £11.76 per watt. Yeah, and interestingly, angling them up slightly saved an additional 2.1 watts. And in my experience, that also makes them much more comfortable to use. So if you race time trials, triathlons, or even kind of gravel or Audax events where aero bars are allowed, then I think these are something that you should definitely be using. Swapping my 40 centimetre bar to a 36 centimetre bar with the hoods tilted in, that saved 2.4 watts. So they cost 20 quid, did you yeah, say? Yeah, that was a 20 pound aluminium handle. Eight pound 33 per watt. Pretty good. But how did it feel though? Because I think that's always a common question with narrow bars. I mean, obviously we are bolted in to the machine there. So there's no kind of handling considerations to make. But in terms of the actual position, how that felt on my shoulders, it was absolutely fine. Now, once I started to really tuck down into an aero position, that's a whole other game changer. My triceps, haven't felt that in, well, ever. I need to grow some apparently because I was dying. Yeah, and we also made a selection of changes that are absolutely free. Now from Liam's baseline position, with your hands on the tops of the handlebars, you move your hands to the brake hoods yeah. and, like a real pro, you slammed your stem. Yes, I did. <laughs> that sounds extreme, but my front end was lowered by just one centimeter. Combine those two though, and the changes were, what, 19.3 watts? Yeah, and of course, you know, most of you probably already know that riding on the hoods of your, the tops of your handlebars and moving to the hoods mm. is gonna be a little bit faster, but it just kind of shows that, you know, it's actually a really significant gain, even at the kind of, you know, relatively slower speeds in the wind tunnel of 35 kilometers per hour. So it's just a good reminder to kind of always ride in a kind of slightly faster position, because I personally don't think it's any less comfortable to ride on the hoods. No, and in terms of that kind of numerical figure, I think I was about 215 watts. That's right towards the top end of my zone two. Take off 20, 30 watts from that, and I'm comfortably in my zone two, even nudging down to my zone one. So, you know, in terms of physiological changes, that's gonna be massive. Yeah, it just makes it that much more sustainable. So if you're out for a really long ride, you know, that's really gonna add up. Mm. Now, Liam also adopted the most aerodynamic riding position he could, which is the aero hoods position you'll often see used in breakaways of pro racing. Now, this saved a whopping 22.4 watts compared to riding on the hoods, which is pretty staggering at this speed. The only thing I'd like to discuss is that position <laughs> because my triceps have not stopped hurting and I think we filmed that about three weeks ago. Um, obviously, if you are going to be riding in this position, you are going to need to practice riding in this position. I think that's really key. And the professionals and even my mates that race at a domestic level, they ride in those positions specifically to train it. So if you are going to adopt those positions, give your body time to actually adapt and then, you know, you will be able to use it much, much more than my 30 second bursts before I cried in a corner. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, you know, the important thing to remember is that you don't have to do the whole ride from kilometer zero right to the end in that position. 
but when you're kind of going fastest or you know you're trying to catch up with your friend who's trying to drop you or something like that it, it, it's just that adopting that extra position mm. just means you're going to go faster yeah. for less effort it's a considered approach yeah. so the more you can do it the kind of faster you're going to be for less watts and really what you're trying to be with all of these things is just to be as efficient as possible yeah. because you know, I don't know about anyone else, but I can only put out a certain amount of watts. Yes. <laughs> and it decreases every year. It seems to decrease <laughs> every single annoying. year, yeah. And, uh, and so what I think most people really need to think about is, you know, obviously, we all, if we all had unlimited time to train, that'd be great. But all of these things, you know, are pretty simple changes that, you know, this doesn't cost anything. And, mm. and just sort of riding in that better position more of the time is going to make a massive difference. Absolutely. In fact, I think that what our video shows is that getting your position sorted is easily the most cost-effective way of going faster. But what do you think of riding in this position? Uh, let me know in the comments below. If you love aero, then like Simon, you might want to see the return of the Venge. You did a lovely video on that. Thanks very much. And if you really love aero, then check out our top five aero bikes because there are some beauties in there. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos, drop us a like, and we will see you in the next one. Aero is still a myth. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs>